This is Wide Oak Creek Outdoors, a podcast for everyone with a passion for the outdoors. All right, welcome to Wide Oak Creek Outdoors podcast. Uh, today we're just gonna shoot the shit. Um, in studio we have myself, Brandon LaVirtue. Got Chris again. Brandon Ceballos. And special guest, Rusty White. <laughs> there you go, man. Hey. We're new to this. <laughs> I definitely am. So, yeah, Rusty's my friend. Been friends with him f- forever. Figured we'd just have him come on and t- have him tell some stories and have a good time. Drink some beer. Yeah, buddy. So, uh, Rusty, how long have I known you? Oh, God. When, when did we met? I was, like, in uh, second grade and you were in first grade. It was yep. back when we did that, like, joint stupid friggin'. Yeah, the combined classes. Yeah, way way back when, so it's been a while. Yeah, I remember you because you were always colorful. <laughs> you had that red hat, and you were the biggest kid in the class. Oh. You, didn't, you didn't know how to dress yourself, did you? No, fuck You no. just, like, <laughs> rolled the dice. You're like, all right, Skittles, got it. <laughs> oh, God. Man, as long as I wore pants and a baseball hat. Hey, game. Chris, we want you for dinner tonight. 30 packets of ketchup, please. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah. So I always thought he looked like the little fat friend from uh, <laughs> what's that friggin' Arnold Schwarzenegger Christmas movie? Uh, Jingle oh, all the way. Jingle all the way. <laughs> <laughs> You're a cocksucker. Fuck you. <laughs> As you can see, guys, we're pretty good friends. So Rusty, what's a good? Let's start out with a hunting story. I mean, you were telling me a bunch in the car so that I was telling you to save for this, but I hope you didn't forget already. Uh, I was thinking about the uh, time we were going after that bear. Yep. But I think you mentioned that in the podcast. Yeah, I mean, I told my side of the story. You're, tell yours. Oh, yeah. Well, I was in this friggin', uh We went into the uh, into the clearing on the landing. They had just cleared it right out. And um, Danny Riley, who was a good family friend of ours, he told me that there was a uh, tree stand that he had built. He told me to get up into it and just look on over through the tree line and whatever. This tree stand, by the way, was the sketchiest fucking thing you would ever see in your life. It was homemade? Homemade. Like, so just like wood nailed yeah, to a tree. Wood nailed thing. to a tree. Sweet. <laughs> yeah, and I'm afraid of heights. I almost <laughs> fell asleep in that friggin' thing, though. <laughs> was it big? Was it So, like, how big was it? I, I mean, it was big. good size. I mean, it was probably about, uh, I want to say, like, three feet wide. In okay. Way. And uh, it was long enough that my feet didn't, like, over the, overhang the, uh, the, on the, the end of it. Nice. But uh, I'm sitting up in it, and uh, Chris is not too far away from me. He's kind of a little forward of me anyway. Yep, I was to your left sitting on a rock. Yeah, exactly. In in the middle of the, the clearing. And my father is way behind me, like over near the brook that we had to cross just to get into this place. And uh, everything's quiet, obviously, and then all of a sudden, boom! I look behind me, and I ain't seen shit. And then all, all of a sudden, I just hear it again. Boom! And I look off to my left, and uh, that frigging big-ass fucking black bear is just fucking screaming in a fucking dead run <laughs> right under my fucking tree. <laughs> and I I had an idea. I weren't going to do shit because my frigging... Uh, at that time, normally, I carried a uh, Mossberg 30-06 bolt action. Okay. But the fucking scope was so fucked up on it that uh, my father told me to take his Ruger American. That thing's only chambered in two two three. So I would have done something, but not much. <laughs> but I aimed down at it, and my scope was nothing but fucking black air. And I fucking squeezed her off, and I fucking racked another one in. Did I get a second shot in? I, I think you got two in, I, yeah. I think I did get two. I don't know how the fuck I missed it. I don't you missed it did. both times, but like you were saying, you don't, and we were talking about it even then. We don't think you did because I mean, then we even went tracking after it and couldn't find it. Yeah, exactly. Did we ever find blood? I forget. We didn't find. No, actually, we might have. So, I think that's what got us interested in going after it, right? I think maybe because then we even had Danny come down. We were tramping through the woods for the next four hours. Me and you were tramping through the fucking <laughs> yep. woods for the next four hours. <laughs> yeah, your dad and Danny was like, oh. You Don't find it. it. <laughs> it's like, oh, cool. So, and I mean, you and I think I pretty much have been hunting with you and your family quite a while. Yeah, like, ever since high school. At least, so at least fourteen years old, and I only got into hunting probably when I was twelve or thirteen. 
So me yeah. and you have been doing it together for a while. Yeah, because you were hunting with your uncle a little bit. Yeah, too, right? I'd hunt with my uncle Howie, who, yeah. just, um, he was the one I was telling you guys about. He was like, you can't eat the horns, but you can eat everything else. <laughs> That's right. You make a little stew out the bones. <laughs> oh God, my grandmother's. They always thought of that too. So I've I've been like a that was something I wanted to bring up on the podcast. It was like when you guys kill when you guys kill your animal fishes fishing you know what how deep do you go with your with your with your product right so like you, you kill this animal and then like you know for a fish you know you skin it you make fillets or for like a deer you know I see people eating the, the livers you know the hearts and stuff like that how far do you go would you go with it like, so we Rusty and I have our friend Ben he'll eat everything out of it that he can he'll eat the liver and the heart he'll give everything a shot yeah i don't like liver or heart or anything like that now is that because of the of the way you made it or just like just of the it's a liver or it's a heart and i'm not doing that well liver obviously has its own taste anyway yeah and i never really cared for the taste of liver heart on the other hand heart is fucking delicious yeah oh god yeah as so long as you, you take like out the like the uh the main artery vein whatever the hell they're valves I valves <laughs> And uh, Brandon's over here shaking his head, throwing up. It's <laughs> <laughs> fucking gross. Well, I can't wait to hear your answer because I already know what it is. <laughs> so if you marinate them in like a, I think it was like a soy sauce with like a balsamic vinaigrette. Ooh. Oh my god, it's good. Fuck. Just pan fry it. Yeah. Yeah. What about you? What about you over there, Brando? None of it. None of it. Just straight. Straight ground beef jerky? Yeah, I have just the meat, man. You gotta have a little organ meat every once in a while. Come Fudge on. no. <laughs> now, is that just because like you don't like it, or have you ever tried to? Before? Um, It's more of a texture thing for me. The The heart's just really tough. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, tough's it's maybe the wrong word, but it's it's like... Dead, I get what you mean. Dense, yeah. I guess. Um, and the liver, like like Rusty said, it's... Uh, That's definitely it, a flavor. It's thing. Definitely, definitely a flavor. It's own thing. Uh, my grandparents, whenever I used to shoot deer, my grandparents, I'd used to give it to them. Really? Yeah, they, they eat it. Well, ate it. <laughs> yeah. I would try it. I think I would try everything on, like, the first deer or, or first turkey. You, or first yeah, deer. you've got you've got to at least try it on your first one. Yeah. Right. Which will be this year. Yeah, hopefully. Knock on wood. No, I think the no, thing with the heart, though, we're is getting that one. it's, like, 100% lean. There's no rat oh, to it 100%. at all. Right, and you can like it. You can add like um, like pig pig fat to it if you want to ground beef it. That's that, yeah, that's too. the best way to make burgers, and yeah. it holds everything together the, so much better. My dad did that um, a couple years ago, and it was amazing. Really, yep. That's that's that, I think one of the things I'm excited about is like when I next when I kill an animal to to try different things from the meat or from the, the animal itself. Yeah, Just try different recipes and shit like that. Yeah, that'd be fucking sweet. Have Have you ever noticed? when when you're eating any kind of meat bear meat deer meat can you taste a difference like how what they ate um i've heard you can with bear bear depending on where it's uh foraged anyway because yes. i have heard that there is a difference between a trash bear yes but and a bear that's been out in the woods its whole life but and the only way you find out is when you take that first bite probably <laughs> Or where you kill it. I, well, uh, so people will say like uh, bears that live um, rurally or like near Dunkin' Donuts or they get into those trash barrels yeah. and eat just cr- trash and you can taste a huge difference. Um, I've never had that, but I have with deer. That, really? I mean, that could actually be why the bear that I've had, I didn't like. It could be. I mean, it very well could be because I don't like bear from the, the experience I've had. I think some was just like ground beef and some was like a, obviously what, not ground beef. What did you like cooked? about it? I just didn't like the flavor of it. Was it like cooked just in a pan? I, I can't remember. I was young. I just remember getting handed. How, how someone, big was the bear? Again, I don't know. Because that makes a difference. Does too. it? Anything under like 200... 175 anything under that's decent yeah anything bigger than that you're getting real fatty like duck i, I compare it to duck meat okay. personally um it's fattier and greasier it's definitely that yeah but i think bear i mean if we're going to compare it that way it's a hell of a lot more tougher oh yeah and it definitely doesn't depend definitely. on like what time of the season you kill the bear too like clearly if you get it after after spring 
it's a little more fattier, right? Because well, it, so in New Hampshire, you, you, our only season is in the in the fall. fall yeah. Oh, okay. Um, is it Canada and Alaska? You can do uh, spring bear hunts. I think so. Um, which I would love to do because the coats in the spring mm-hmm. are way nicer than in the fall. Oh yeah. I, I want to make a rug, but I don't dare. Use the ones up here. Yeah, it depends what you shoot. Obviously, right. like I've seen some really nice bears, but most of them are raggedy and thin-haired and they just fall apart. Yeah, like real. Um, like say you like pat them on the back, that all that hair is falling out. Oh wow! It, it's just not great. So, yeah, so like if I buy my t- tag, it's usually for someone else to fill it because I, I don't. And well, if I fill the tag, I'm gonna give the meat away because I don't right. like it. From that experience, though, so I think you just now. I think you have to have it prepared for you differently. Yeah, you're. I mean, you're probably right. Hey, I'll be your cook. I'll try it out. Shoot, see, there you but, go. Um, get, you've gone a deer, right, Rusty? What? Tell us your first deer story. You mean my only? Yeah, I mean, I've been you're better my than me and Brand. Life, my and one and only. One deer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I was hunting with my uncle and my sister, and. Uh, uh, my uncle put me out on this point that was sitting, um, uh, like I had Haith, like in front of me and behind me and, uh, right beside me was a river. And, uh, the weird part was I was only out there for like maybe fucking 10 minutes. When was this? I don't like this story already. <laughs> <laughs> <For his best. laughs> Didn't even have to work for it. <laughs> <laughs> I even went and took a piss before I sat down. <laughs> Spoiled brat. <laughs> but anyway, um, I just started hearing fucking trudging around me. Like, I could obviously tell that it was going in a fucking circle around me. And uh, at that point, I was thinking it was fucking squirrels. I was out on the same fucking <laughs> point, like, the day before. And every time I'd hear thrudging, just fucking pull the scope up. You know, just to see, and uh, fucking squirrels every fucking time. Not this one. This one a hell of a lot bigger, and uh, it came to the point like across from me, and it got in the fucking river, and it started swimming towards me, and then it got up on fucking. What? It fucking came towards me. Believe it or not, I couldn't fucking believe it neither. So you watched this deer swim? I didn't watch it. I could hear it. Oh, okay, okay. The fucking grass and the hay was so fucking tall. I couldn't really, I couldn't see what was going on. I could just hear it doing backflips and shit. Right. Oh, fuck <laughs> but anyway, uh, it came out of the fucking water. At that point, I stood up and it came out of the fucking water right in front of me, and uh, I could see head and front shoulder. So I just aimed for fucking head, uh, front shoulder, and fucking put one in it. At that point, it fucking jumped back. Uh, spun around to head back towards the river and it got back in the water and I dumped it again that point it fucking stopped it stuck its fucking head way up in the fucking air and it was caught on like a patch of grass and I've heard horror stories about going near deer while they're still kicking (laughs) so I was like not today motherfucker (laughs) I fucking put another one in him at that point yeah he was fucking done then and I walked out in the fucking river, coldest fucking river in the world, <laughs> and grabbed him by the fucking antler and just dragged his ass in. What and, was it? Um, hundred and by the time I got it completely dressed, hundred and twelve, nice. four pointer. Hey. That's not bad. No, that's, oh, that's not bad. Oh, it was good. The surprising thing was, all three fucking shots, probably within three fucking inches of each other. What was your yardage? Basically, fucking point blank. <laughs> don't, don't matter. But. Where, where so, did you hit it? Right all three the in the neck. Uh, it actually <laughs> came out. It came out the right side of the fucking face because I went to grab the antler to bring him in, and I kind of like uh, pulled the other side of his head so I could see it. It was all fucking gone. No way. Oh, fuck yeah. Two face. <laughs> well, I hit him three times with a fucking 30 out six. So that's, that's, what I use. That's, that's my rifle. I use a thirty out six, and I, right, I, yeah. I feel like you can you can take like anything down with it. At, oh yeah, to a certain point, like even moose, bison, right? You can probably shoot a bison. Yeah. Oh, I would say. So an old uh, wise tale I always heard was um, 
if you're going to go out in the woods to shoot deer, make sure you're bringing enough power to take down a bear at the same time. Yeah, I heard that. So that's why I never, I never really believed in uh, going out in the woods with anything lower than a 270. Okay. Like I've never been a big fan of 243 or 223 yeah. for that matter. Yeah. And that day that I was shooting at that friggin' bear where me and Chris were at, I was hunting with a fucking 223. <laughs> so I kind of knew I was a little fucked at that point. I mean, I've seen kids hunt with 223s and I think 243. His, and, yeah, I think his point's more along the lines that, like, having more firepower is a good, can, yeah, isn't never, detrimental. It's never a, a bad thing. Right. Um, so, funny story, now that we're talking about deer getting hit in the face. Um, <laughs> <laughs> remember the the deer that you helped which one you and me helped uh, drag drag from my dad yes okay so to put this into perspective i'll try to post a picture later this thing is like 10 years old no teeth and the bases of this thing's antlers are like soda cans oh wow. and the, the rack was sick it, it was like double drop time all gnarly and weird the craziest buck i've ever seen and it had that one, the one side of it was like one giant tine that was like flattened out yeah it like it was flattened out and then just dropped it was yep. it was really weird and a guy hit me up on facebook and he had pictures of this deer like six years prior and it was huge so long story short my dad shoots at this thing and it Five just, minutes into his fucking hunt. Yeah, literally just walking out to a spot. <laughs> it always happens it, that way. Oh, my, for him it does. <laughs> we we have him coming on the podcast next week, and I'm gonna, you know, tell everyone right now that it's not gonna be a good one because I'm gonna be pissed the whole entire podcast. <laughs> <laughs> um, so he shoots this thing right, and it it doesn't move, and he's like, "Did I did I miss it? Like it, it's not moving at all." Shoots again, thing goes twenty yards, dies. He shot the the freaking thing's jaw right off. The and, first shot? Yeah. I've seen that happen. Yeah. And it must have just stunned the deer. And the deer was like, what the hell just happened? Right. Stood there and let him take another shot. And this goddamn mosquito like, bit me. Well, how the fuck do you hit the thing in the jaw? And then the next shot, you just smoke the thing. Right. Like... Me, uh, your dad it? needs to put a, a, like an actual like hard stand out there. Just he like is. make a structure. Yeah, he's, I think he's going to. I mean, I've heard that. Maybe, Maybe he was just so excited when he, he pulled up and he just, like, jerked it. Could very very well could have been. Well, I mean, the cool thing with that deer, too, is when we were dragging it, remember, it's under its shoulder in the armpit? Yes. It looked like somebody took a shot at it with yep. a bow or something. And uh, remember, was it, it was like three weeks before that, I had shot a deer. Right, and we were... And we I were thought it was me. It could that, have been you. Because I, what I did was I shot... Um, it was probably the same size deer, but I don't think it was the same one. But I had uh, shot with my bow and grazed the front of it and opened this deer wide open. We, tr- we I think it was like a mile and a half, almost two miles. I think I just- helped you that time. I helped, I helped. I don't think it was that one. No. Yes, I wound a lot of deer. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, and we ended up having a dog come in and search for it, too, and we never found it. But, yeah, that was... That was a bummer. That was my probably would have been my second biggest deer. Yeah. Back to the Rusty's point of his only deer. Technically, that's not your only deer. What do you mean? Did you hit it with a truck? Oh, I've hit. I don't know how many <laughs> with fucking trucks. <laughs> so does that? I know people can like get a tag and use it as so like your tag. tag for a deer. Does that take away like your hunting opportunity? Nope. No. Nope. It's just like a tag you have to buy to. You don't even have to buy it. They can just give it to you. It's a salvage yeah. tag so the deer doesn't go to waste. Oh, okay. Because the one I'm thinking of was the one with Dougie. Oh, yeah. Dougie was obliterated, and you were driving his truck. Yeah, and that fucking deer just came out of nowhere. <laughs> so <laughs> Fucking ran the thing right over. I'm looking at it, and I'm thinking, you know what? I bet we can salvage this. What are you driving? I was driving one ton. Fucking oh, Lord. GMC. Right. Yeah, it was a GMC 3500. Yeah. yeah. It was a nice truck, too. It was a nice truck. Did you I, salvage I, the deer? Yep. Uh, as much as we could, right. anyway. Um, the funny part was we brought this deer back to Dougie's, and I asked him, hey, do you mind if we gut it out here? He goes, I don't give a fuck. Just clean it up afterwards. Okay. So uh, 
I cut it open with my fucking pocket knife and I'm got fucking hands in there and I pull out his fucking um, I pull out the fucking paunch, his stomach and all that shit. And uh, at that point, I got Chris helping me, and we're trying yeah, to fucking take. I, we're I met you on the side of the road to load load it up. Yeah, exactly. And then I followed you back to Dougie's. And uh, me and you were fucking. I think we were trying to tear it out at that point. I thought I had it all cut, and uh, we're reefing on it pretty quick. I just hear. <laughs> I fucking automatically knew we had fucking punched it. I'm like, <laughs> Chris. Chris, we gotta get up. We gotta get. Ooh, ooh, I'm fucking dry heaving. So fucking mad. There are three things in this world that'll make me fucking puke uh, horseradish, black licorice, and a fucking punched punctured punched deer. Punch, punch deer. <laughs> oh, yeah, the, it stinks. Oh, bad. it's bad. You fucking asked Chris. I was sitting there just going. Ooh, ooh. Yeah, it's rough. What? Did you run over another deer? Because I I do remember get cut or was that? I remember cutting back straps off a deer in your front yard. That was that deer. No, because or were we just gunning it at Dougie's? We uh, we did the gunning at Dougie's, and then we brought the we brought the deer back to gotcha. uh, yeah back back to your house. Okay. Yeah, exactly. I mean, thank God we got the fucking back straps out of it and the tenderloin. <laughs> uh, Two quarters I knew were going to be just done. Yeah. The other, I thought we could save the other quarters. And, uh, because they looked all right. And when I scun them and took them off, they looked fine. So I handed them over <laughs> to my father, because my father's really good at cutting steaks off. As soon as he fucking cut into them. Oh, God. Oh, man. I was hoping you said when you started cooking them, it smelled like it was urine. all <laughs> fucking clot. It, yeah, it's all blood clot yeah. through there. Oh, God. It was bad. <laughs> That that's the problem that I found with um, shooting them with my bow. If you make a good shot, you can't use any of that rib meat right. mo- most of the time. Um, sometimes, even if you hit them, you know, on the money, uh, right behind that front shoulder. Sometimes you can't even use that front that front shoulder. Is that because like the blood clots? Yeah. Well, the hemorrhaging. So basically, a bullet. Don't quote me on this, but a bullet basically, um, like the shocks the deer. Like, what, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, with with an arrow, you're basically making the deer bleed out. It's not gonna. Oh, it's like, not a quick kill. Right. So, well, it can be if you get it in the heart of the lungs. It's gonna be like very like. It's my gonna, shooting's not gonna be a quick kill. My so I think what you're shooting. trying to get at is when you shoot a deer with a bow, the entry wound is decimating to the meat and everything that's yes. going through because of the broadhead just tearing right. through everything. It's ble- making the, th- the deer bleed out. Right, and w- when you shoot it with a bullet, the bullet's so fast going through, the damage with a bullet is typically on the exit wound or where yes. it stops yes. because of the it, cavitation. And If you shoot it in the heart, the heart's basically going to explode. Right. Because of the impact of right. that bullet. Well, I was going to say... Uh, wouldn't it be the other way around? Because I figured the ballistics of the actual bullet would be a hell of a lot more harmful to the meat than the actual broadhead itself. No, because the broadhead's tearing. That That's what's causing the blood clot. I mean, the cavitation that the bullet's causing probably isn't, at the moment, as detrimental to the inside of the deer as the tearing of right. the arrow. The ripping and the tearing. Okay, I can see Because that's what's causing the problem that we're running into is with the blood clotting and the hemorrhaging. Right. No, I see your point. Yep. Yeah, and it, and it yeah, it all depends on where you shoot it too. But and I mean, blood doesn't lose its clotting factor quick. Cool. It takes time. So I had a dog tracker. I've used them a couple times, and a woman told me that deer can lose basically three quarters of their blood supply and still live, and they resupply their blood faster than any other animal. I don't know if that's a hundred hundred percent true, but either way, they resupply their blood extremely fast right so unless you hit them in an artery or um those vital organs they're most likely going to live they're not going to bleed out and die like those blood trails you see that are insane and you're like how is this deer not Still dead going, yeah it's because they clot really fast they resupply their blood really fast um i did was it two years ago i think it was two years ago i shot one right in the ass <laughs> Hell yeah. And it didn't even go 45 yards, piled over and died. 
I hit the um, the artery that goes right through the spine and in the butt. Yeah. Hit it perfect because when I hit that, when I, when I saw the arrow hit the deer, I just saw blood everywhere, and I just it was wobbly and tipped right over 45, 50 Oof. yards. It's a yeah. lucky shot too. Oh, it was so lucky, so lucky. That was fucking awesome. <laughs> Yeah, that's um, a good one. I don't know, man. So what else? What else do you like to do? Well, we were talking about that fishing story that I was doing. Oh yeah, yeah. Tell tell us about that because Brandon over here, Tobias loves to fish. I do like fishing. And everything you do is probably fucking out in the middle of nowhere. Uh, not that day. Uh, have you ever done the white perch run? No. White perch run around. Um, uh, it's like uh, I want to say it's like early to mid spring. Okay, so so early early to mid spring mean you're going on a birch run. Got it. All right, so <laughs> paint me this picture. <laughs> Tell me a story. So what it is is uh, I don't know exactly how it works, but the uh, white perch will uh, get in a school. It might be a mating thing to tell you the truth, hmm. but they'll uh, run in a like a whole fucking huge fucking group, and if you can catch it at the right time, um, in the right location, yeah, you can fill fucking buckets coolers we did both that fucking day dude i am with totally down to go do this i mean like i said you have to catch at the right time at the fucking right location what we were doing was um we were at fucking pier 19 over in Tuftonboro. okay um right on one of Saki, obviously yeah and um we tried a couple of places before that obviously didn't catch anything and uh once we got there people were already lined up Oh, really? So they're just, you're just casting out and snagging at that point? Literally. Well, it hadn't started when we got there. So we were just in fucking time. And when it started, I swear to fucking God, it just, like I said, we went with a fucking bucket. We had a cooler in the back. I don't know. It wasn't for filling fish. I can tell you that much. <laughs> it turned into filling fish, though. <laughs> but it turned into filling fucking fish. And it, we fucking overflowed the both of them. No, were you just on the shore? No, we were right on the dock. Oh, okay. Just fucking filling it with big fucking white perch. That's sick. Dude. They're they good eating white perch. White perch is uh, kind of like it's actually similar to um, haddock. Oh, okay. Yeah. So they're actually really good. If you anything, exactly I think like they got a little. Ceviche. I think they got a little bit of a sweeter taste to it. Oh, that'd be that's that's. I've bad. heard a lot of people actually call them the um, the uh, freshwater ha- uh, freshwater haddock. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I've heard that too. They're really good frying fish. Okay. Dude, that sounds amazing. So, uh, finally, uh, I mean, it slowed down eventually. And at that point, the fucking uh, fishing game, they showed up at that point telling everybody to get off the docks. Oh, yeah. It was pretty late in the day. So, uh, but they had to tell them like fucking four or five times everybody to get off the docks. That, so, yeah, that's the one thing. Like, fishing game up here is, is paid by, isn't. It's not. It's not. They're paid by the state, correct? They're not like um or they're they're uh, they're a state. Donation. They're a state enforcement agency. Are they only yeah. like like I remember reading something saying like they only make money off of like the tags and the, and the tickets they make. Mm-hmm. They're not like funded. Correct. That's well, crazy. no, they they are true. funded. It's a funded agency because you also have the biology division of fish and game. You have the law enforcement division of fish and game. So they are a funded agency, but they make a lot of. So there's like a lot of taxes and firearm sales, um, bullet sales, and obviously like hiking. Um, if you get a hike safe card, yeah, that funds them. Um, so like off the tags and off of yep. all so those things. Say a hiker gets lost, right? Yep. And they don't have that card. You're paying that bill. You are. Yep. Yeah, I've heard that. There's a bill coming to you. Okay. Expensive as if you fuck. if you hike or do anything like so. When you get a registration for like an ATV or a uh, snowmobile, yep. or if you buy a hunting license, you're already mat- automatically enrolled in that like hike safe program. Oh, so, really? Yeah, so if you, by my knowledge. So, wait, say that again? So, when you register like an ATV and you break down, get stranded, and you need a rescue, or if you're hunting and you get stranded, need a rescue, by my basic understanding of reading it online you're enrolled so like so you're covered yeah so if you need to get rescued so me buying a hunting license i'm covered i yes i believe so does it do you think it has to be like say if i go hike right yep and get lost which i wouldn't but if i did 
would I be covered even though I'm not hunting? I think so. Okay. Just just because I I paid money to the to yeah. Okay. That was my basic understanding of reading the uh, the their website, getting the website information off their website. I mean, it makes sense. I could, I could be totally wrong. You could get fucked over. I'm not saying go. Well, yeah, call. obviously check. Right. But like the purpose of the hike safe card is so that way if you get lost or break an ankle while hiking that rescue becomes covered. Right. I got a it's better basically idea. insurance. Yeah, in a way. Don't get lost. That's crazy to think I got a better idea. <laughs> Don't get to the top of Mount Shakora wet and decide to sprain your ankle. <laughs> yeah, R- Rusty and I are also we do the volunteer fire department together and we've done that for a while. Right. So you you guys have been on quite a few of those, right? They're fucking so goddamn common. They always decide to sprain their ankles. At the top. At the fucking yeah. top. <laughs> Because that's just the time to do it. <laughs> well, even on Northwoods Law, that's all you see on there. It, it's constantly lost hikers, and half of them aren't dressed for it. They don't know what they're doing. I mean, if if you're just going out to hike, go on some easy trails. Yeah. Right. Right. I mean, I I'm all for getting out in the woods and get hiking, and but you got to know where you're going and what you're doing. That's also important. Like, there, you you got to know. Like, I can throw off the top of my head three different people that hike. That, like, hike at a level, at each different levels. Yeah. So, if I'm getting to that level, I know, but, hey, uh, like, Goose, let's go for a walk, my dude. And him and I will go for a walk. And right. And go to the next person and so on and so forth. Yeah. It, so, wing it. Not, I, I not think, that level. I, I just, I think people don't understand what, what goes into it. Right. I, it, obviously, because that's usually what it is. It's like, Either they get, it's usually an injury or being lost. Then it gets amplified by the fact by them being not prepared. Right. And, and we're always bringing them out in the dark every yeah, single time. It never <laughs> fails. And with that, you're risking more injury to the rescue personnel, yeah. too, because the, and it's usually on a difficult section of terrain, too. Right. So they probably fucked up and broke their ankle for real. But yeah. Still. It, it's a pain in the ass. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure it is. But, I mean, the places we've done it are pretty intermediate compared yeah. to, like, what... It's not like Mount Washington. It's oh, Mount God, Shakur. I've seen some of them do Mount Washington. I mean, there's places in Mount Washington that I just say, fuck it, you guys are on your own. Yeah. Yeah, I'll go get you a sandwich. You get into Huntington Ravine, which Huntington Ravine is, like, one of the windiest places on fucking Earth. Oh, fuck that. Yeah. See, places like that, though, people got to be prepared. It's got to be injuries in there. I mean, I but guess. I think you'd still be surprised just really? people not knowing. I feel like it's a lot of, like, tourists. You know, that in my mind, it's like, like, you, like you go somewhere, right? So you go to Florida, you're like, oh, I can swim in a lake. You know, people yeah, think they can go swim alligators. in a lake. Right. <laughs> yeah, it's alligators there, you dumbass. Like, yeah, idea. true. Right, exactly. Good point. Very exactly. good point. And that's what it is. It's mostly the tourists coming up saying, hey, let's take a day hike. This trail looks fun. Let's not read anything into the trail. Yeah, the trail looks yeah. fun. Let's go. Yeah, good point. I mean, from the road, Piper Trail doesn't look like anything until you get up it. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. It's and, one of those things. And Piper Trail is the harder trail out of the two that go up to the top of Mount Shikoro. So. Because is Piper Trail the one that puts in? Piper Trail is the one that uh, starts off of Route 16 in, in Albany. Albany, yeah. Right yeah. by um, this. It used to be the stove shop or something. Yeah, I think it was like a or one actually, one I think wheel it was drive. like a trading post. Yes, like, believe it or not. Okay. Because I remember going in there when I was a little kid, and that place was awesome. Had like a train that went around the friggin' ceiling. That place was so fucking cool. <laughs> no <laughs> kidding. Um, so you mentioned about I meant to ask this question the last time we had a guest on was experiences with fish and game. Do you guys have any? Obviously, you had the one with the. Uh, Gabe Warren's at uh, Pier 19. What about you? Do you have any more, or <clears throat> how about you guys? You got any? I have not ran into fishing game in Florida or here. And I'm at Florida. I'm glad I did because <laughs> when I was because um, you beat the shit out of alligators, right? Beat the shit out of alligators. <laughs> and then even when my dad bought a house in uh, where he lives, I used to go to like canals and stuff like that. And the city would put. Uh, cart in the lakes and the yep. canals and stuff to help clean up the water so it was, like, just kind of helps man, like, manage the water and the ecosystem yep, in there exactly. probably yep. so I would I would try to catch one because shit clean my fucking lake my dude or my pond you know what I'm saying <laughs> so I used to catch like bass uh, tilapia catfish and try to go for carp 
and I would just put them in a bucket and then I would drive like 20 minutes to my house and dump them in my pond. So I'm pretty sure if I ever got like stopped by a fishing game, I was fucked. <laughs> at that point, I'm like 17, 18, like getting ready to graduate high school, whatever. Right, yeah. So, but I wanna, no, I haven't really ran into any fishing game. I want to try an alligator so fucking bad. Oh, you never had it? I've never had oh, it. Oh, it's you? good, man. It is good, especially if you do nuggets. If you exactly, do nuggets, really fried good. nuggets. See, I've heard people uh, call <sighs> steaks out of the freaking tail. I've heard alligator I've heard tail is too. big down there. Yeah, well, it, well, it's harder to come by, like in like populated areas. But like, you go to like small restaurants. Like, we used to have this one like bar type restaurant that would serve gator gator nuggets all the time that's usually how you eat it it's just gator nuggets that's like the yeah. popular way now like it's that's so good now it can't taste like chicken like what everybody says it does i though. mean it does it really does are you serious yeah it's a you know what you know it's like um it's a mix between chicken and rabbit oh i never oh. had rabbit what i never had rabbit dude oh my god so you could like Make a fucking alligator pot pie and just mix it with like chicken broth, something like that, and it'll come out the fucking same. Probably. Yeah, I wouldn't doubt it. Wow. It's a little more tastier. I. It's got a better taste than chicken. Hmm. Like a game. Uh, game I wouldn't say gamey, but you know it's alligator. Yeah. But it does. Uh, it, it equates to chicken, I guess. So the healthy buffalo in Chichester, New Hampshire. Chichester, 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 New Hampshire. They apparently sell alligator meat. Oh shit! Yeah, they have like it's called the healthy buffalo, and they sell all these exotic foods like ostrich. We might have kangaroo. to take a trip down there. Yeah, we, we just went through fucking Chichester today. Did we? Yeah. Yeah. Did we did. you? Oh, that's dude. Sucks. Let's do it. We should. So, um, um, back to the question though. Yeah. Like, what about you, Rusty? Anything else other than the the time at Pier nineteen or? I almost ended up on Northwoods Law. Oh, did you? Yeah. If I had waited just a few more minutes, I could have been on. Cut it out. Uh, we, uh, I think it was muzzleloader season um, two years ago. And um, we went in to uh, tag in. One of, the guys, one of the guys out of my group got a deer. Cool. We went to tag in. And uh, I saw an old buddy of mine from a uh, previous fire department that I was on. We were talking. And uh, he was going to tag his deer in, like, right after us. So, uh, game ones arrived, checked all of our tags, because, you know, can't let things be. Yeah. You can't know. let things be. And uh, we just left. Doing the job, and then, um, <laughs> just doing the job, Just doing the job. <laughs> well, uh. Are they, though? <laughs> <laughs> well, we left, and then um, it wasn't long afterwards. That guy that I was, that buddy of mine that I was talking to. Uh, they filmed him getting his deer weighed in and tagged and all that stuff and put it on Northwoods Law. Oh, okay. So nothing bad then. Nothing bad or oh. anything like that. Oh, okay. So, but a other, cliffhanger, I know, but... Other than that, nothing? Not really. I mean, my dad has a shit ton of times, but my dad's kind of a loud mouth anyway, so... He deserves it. Exactly. <laughs> um, me? Um... Back in the day, I was a kid back in the day, um, just them checking our licenses. Um, and then this previous year, I, like I said, I shot those two does back to back days. And I had a fish and game officer, uh, Ken St. Pierre, and I actually know him pretty well. I went to school with him, grew up with him. Super nice guy. Uh, he came and apparently he had a gut pile on private property, just wanted to know where I'd shot my dear right um and we just talked for a couple minutes and he went on his way um most of, most of the time if you're doing the the right thing yeah. they're not going to give you shit um do i think they go a little overboard on certain things yes i think that's a, that's the person though it is and and it's like everything you get you know yeah good guys you got guys who are a little right well yeah it. you get you get dickhead cops you get real nice cops Yep. You get dickhead, you know, fishing game officers. You get nice ones. Even in my, in my job at the jail, you get really nice COs. You get asshole COs. Yeah, right. it, it's, it's, it's everywhere. It's everything. That's life. Um, but I, <laughs> I know think a couple. You, I, <laughs> <laughs> Three sitting at this table. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, I think they get a bad rap because um, they are just trying to do their job. Yeah. And you're trying to enjoy the outdoors. You're trying to. Uh, hunt and they're 
you feel like they're invading your space by asking for your license and you know uh what'd you kill this with how'd you right. but you also have to think at uh their side is they're constantly dealing with people that are trying to pull one over on them right so if you're doing the right thing you got nothing to worry about right in my opinion yeah no i agree with you yeah you got a good point so switching gears a little bit here, guys. So let's talk about this upcoming season, right? So it starts in September, right? Brown is down in September. Yeah, buddy. So what is the game plan? What is what, <laughs> How are we going to get to September, especially for myself? Your <laughs> season starts in September. Well, I know, it wasn't your start, like last week. My season. My, <laughs> <laughs> no, my no. down 16. <laughs> <laughs> my season starts in November. I don't do archery like you guys. No? So. Well, Why not? I'm, oh. I just never got into it. I'm dedic. I'm gonna dedicate this year. This is my like make or break year. If I don't make it, I'm going back to rifle because I love rifle. You're making but, it. But this we are, is the year. We are making it. <laughs> Believe it or not, I think muzzleloader is the finest. See, to me, every time I think of muzzleloader, I think of the British are coming. The British are coming. <laughs> the British are coming. <laughs> so I just don't do my it. old man loves muzzleloader. Really? He'll sometimes he'll hunt with his muzzleloader it during rifle. But you say, like, now muzzleloaders is nothing different than a rifle. It's not. It's really not. So it's like, what's the point? I mean, you get an extra, like, an extra season out of it, right? Well, unless you go to Pennsylvania. Because I heard in Pennsylvania they do a, uh, it's called, like, a traditional yes, muzzleloader they, season. Yeah. So you can't hunt with an inline. Right. And in some aspects, I've heard that you can't even hunt with a per- uh, percussion cap. Really? I don't know if that's true or not. I mean, somebody could probably correct me on that's that. That's cool, though. If You, you know... I think that I had heard from somebody like the newest you can hunt with is a flintlock. Flintlock, yeah. Yeah. But I heard a story. Um, I was actually reading uh, Field and Stream, and uh, this guy was telling the story about he uh, he bought and put together a um, actual uh, flint um, no matchlock matchlock rifle, mm-hmm. and uh, one of those big fuckers you have to put on a freaking stand, and uh, he was actually hunting in a tree with it, and uh, he shot a big old fucking buck with it. And uh, those fucking things, they're like a one-inch fucking ball. Yeah. They're huge. Yep. And um, he got out of the fucking stand because obviously he dropped it. And that fucking deer came up and started swinging at him with his fucking antlers. He said he grabbed it by the fucking barrel and hit him in the neck so fucking hard (laughs) that it actually split the fucking stalk in half. Holy What? Yeah. Made the fucking uh, the steel butt plate just fucking bend forward like it was a fucking spring. And he killed it. He killed it right then and there. He had hit it so fucking hard. He said the adrenaline was just running through him so fucking bad. He That's didn't amazing. think he'd hit something that fucking hard. That's amazing. Is this an article or is this a story you heard? This is an actual story I read out of Field and Stream years ago. <laughs> That's awesome. Holy oh, so wow. Just beat the shit out of it. Just oh. beat the fuck out of it. That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm thinking, I'm thinking like this month, what are we in, March? Right? Yep. Mm-hmm. So finish out March, March and April, my goal is to get my bow tuned, and I want I want to sight in my rifle. I mean, I'm pretty sure it's sighted in already, but I want to put some rounds to my rifle just to just to get it out there, right? Get some time out there. Maybe go for some walks, yeah. see some signs and stuff like that. But what are you guys, what are you guys thinking? I'm afraid to waste the ammo. Yeah, I mean, At yeah. this fucking point, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, God. But um, fucking bullet's gonna cost three dollars a fucking pop, <laughs> and it doesn't turn around. Yeah, but I mean, you got. I mean, it's no different. You gotta put. The, you gotta put the time in, right? You gotta, That's very true. God damn you gotta put the time in. So I think <laughs> what I'm gonna do is <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna practice with my bow. Obviously, get yeah. that because I know I'm I'm a de- I know I'm a decent shot with my rifle. As long as it's sighted in, I'm not gonna worry too much about it because I I want. Sid got me my um my license for my birthday, and for some unknown reason she has enough faith in me, so she got me the bonus tag. Right. <sighs> oh, so I know. now you gotta get something. All right, at least one. <laughs> at least one. So I'm gonna put some time in, make sure I'm good with that. Um, some scouting. I actually picked up a a trail cam today from Walmart. Um, what'd you get? A Wild Game Innovations thirty dollar one. Was it on sale? No. You son of a bitch! I, I splurged, man. I saw it. It was thirty-eight bucks, and it was. It said it was a, uh, a new. What was it like? New design or something? I'm like, oh fuck it, why not? Does it have a curve to it? Yes. Like, like a wave almost. It kind of. 
it, is it it's like um shit I, I know i know exactly which one you're talking about because i saw it the other day and i think it gave me like a free app to use for hunting oh no shit so i saved money on that i don't have to yeah. buy on x but you do <laughs> <laughs> i mean i don't mind. so yeah just time in with the bow get a good place for my stand up um are you gonna do your property this year Yep, and I'm gonna mooch off Brandon. I mean, clearly that's, that's well, gonna, yeah, obviously. it's got it's the plan because yeah. it has to happen. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, Chris, what have you ever told these guys the story about um, when you tried baiting for deer that one time? Or oh, the, the, the fishing game. The, yeah, exactly. Fuck. I told Brandon because I showed up to work the next day. Like, man, you won't believe what the fuck happened to me. What the fuck was it? Wasn't a salt block or something like that? Uh, um. All right. I'll swing back to the story. We'll go back to your question in a second. Right. <laughs> so, with the fishing game aspect, uh, I was out in the middle of Juan Lancet going, um, I was hunting. That story was actually funny as shit. I was hunting down by a swamp, nice swampy area. And I'd just gotten done because I just worked a, a 12 hour shift, wanted to put some time into the woods. And <laughs> um, I was sitting there. <laughs> I'm just laughing to myself thinking about this. And um, so I sat there, didn't see anything. I mean, I knew there was deer in there because I I put a mineral br- brick out or a salt lick, whatever you want to call it. It's a salt lick. And I put it by my camera and there was, um before there was a, um, a hunting blind kind of close to it. I wasn't hunting out of the blind. I took the blind down, put it away. Um, and then went to a different area. But I still had to walk out through where my uh, lick was. <sighs> Getting excited. Can't breathe right. All this pressure on me. <laughs> so Don't incriminate yourself. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, anyways, was walking back out. Had literally just taken a shit in the woods. So I'm wearing half my underwear because I cut some of them to use. What the fuck? Use as a rag. What the You're always supposed to carry fucking shit out of paper on you. <laughs> and so. Only you. Most fucking uncomfortable situation ever. So I had literally just taken a shit off the main trail. My underwear were all jacked up because, like, I had a nice shirt on. I didn't want to cut that. So I'm like, underwear, man. Walked out. I'm like, there's another truck parked in front of mine. Get going. Oh, fuck, it's green. Like, I know where this is going. <laughs> Pop out all the rounds of my rifle, get out to the truck. Hey, fishing game, how's it going? Ah, great. No, like, see anything today? Nope. Just right. you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Just you. Like, we got a couple questions for you. I'm like, I think I know what they're about. Um, what can I do for you? So, there's a, a brick down there. I'm like, yep, I know exactly what you're talking about. Put all my shit away. Pissed. The part I was pissed about was I had to walk back there because my underwear were already uncomfortable as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Did you tell them that? <laughs> no, we got nothing but a band. I'm free ball on so, here. Oh, that's great. We're just, literally, I mean, the two guys are great. They're, I forget who they were. Really nice, no problems. We were shooting the shit on the way out there. I told them exactly where it was, what was going on. Wasn't trying to hide anything mm-hmm. from them because I'm like, I didn't know I fucked up because. Ignorance is an excuse, but it, I was ignorant to the law. Um, yeah. And so th- I'm like, yep, yeah, it's right there. My trail cam's right there. I was just trying to get the pictures. I mean, I wasn't, I honestly wasn't hunting here. I was further down at a second hate or swamp, whatever you want to call it. And you're like, okay, cool. Uh, how about a warning this time? And the dudes just picked it up, threw it up into the swamp. And they're like, it's all good, man. Really? Yeah. They, wow, that's awesome. Yeah, they were cool about it. They're like, just so you know, this is how you do your baiting. This is your season for baiting. This is how you get your permit. You can't be baiting right now. All they did was take the brick, like they looked at it, threw it into the swamp. They're like, "You're all good. Just a warning." That's awesome. Yeah, they That's cut great. me a big, big break. And, and that, I finally went home and wiped my ass for real. Well, that's what <laughs> that's what people need though is yeah. don't hammer them if they like you like you said ignorance. Right, you and didn't I, know what got. I think what saved me was I was honest. Honest. From the beginning. From the yeah, beginning. Yeah. That's, that's, that's key. Right, right mm-hmm. off the bat. They're like, hey, what's going on? I'm like, nothing much. Hey, what, what can I do for you? Like, hey, we have a couple questions about some things out there. I'm like, I think I might know what you're talking about. If it's mine, I'll bring you right to it. They're like, it's a 
uh, a mineral lake? I'm like, yep, that's mine, man. That, I'll show you right where it is. And they're like, yeah, we know where it is. Let's go for a walk. <laughs> we know right where it is. <laughs> like, cool. I'm like, did you know there was a camera right there? <laughs> but, yeah. So did you not check your camera and you didn't see them on there or what? I, no, I, I didn't know. see the the game warns there at all. Huh. When I went well, back and checked the SD card. Right in the middle, though. Yeah. <laughs> no, that was... That's I made, awesome. I made sure that, to hide. That's a good story. Yeah. Okay. I, so... That's why I don't have anything. And, I mean, I've worked with them a couple of times on carryout, so right. I have no anger or animosity towards them. They're but like you said, honesty, man. If if you're yeah. trying to hide stuff, they know. Right, like, yeah. They're not dumb. They, they do this for a living. But I did throw my uh, my best friend's dad under the bus. <laughs> it <I'm> was like, his. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I didn't get in trouble. That's why. It was his, it was his spot. I'm like, <laughs> when they asked me what was, uh, what was out there, I'm like, well, I know I got my... My trail cam and my my mineral lick out there, and I think my buddy's dad's got his tree stand out there. I'm not sure what you're looking for. The salt licks right under the tree stand. <laughs> <laughs> but the next day, fuck the next thing I visited with my buddy Nick, and the tree stand that his dad had out was sitting in his backyard. Same. <laughs> 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 but all right, back to what Brandon was, or yeah, what you were saying. So yeah, what is what's your plan for this this off this season? Build up the build up to the season. Like if you had to break it down in like sections, okay, this section I'm gonna start practicing this or get to this point. So all on right, so, forth. so we'll start tomorrow. Tomorrow and the next day, I'm literally putting some serious miles on in the woods. Okay. Um, I put I think twelve or fifteen miles on the last two days I had off. Um, I'm just trying to find, you know, bedding areas, um, mostly sheds, but I can't find those ever. <laughs> um, I have come to the conclusion that the deer in my area don't lose antlers. They just keep growing. <laughs> um, that, that's what happens. I think Keith might, uh, contradict you there. Yeah, he might. But, <laughs> no, his, in his area, they, they lose their antlers. My area, they don't. I'll just, we'll just have to bring him back and walk around with you. He'll find them all. <laughs> he finds them all. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm just trying to find those bedding areas. Um, this time of year, they're, they're not going to travel those same exact trails as they would in, uh, the summer or even September, um, and then obviously October, November. But uh, you find you can find where they're where they they will bed, and if you know where they um, could potentially bed in those um, October, November months, then you can kind of start to close in on where they're going to be. Um, so that's what I do now. I, I scout. All my days off, I'm out in the woods um, following those heavy game trails. I'll put cameras out, um, and, and that way, like I said, I can close in because they're still going to be around those game trail uh, areas. Um, it's just a matter of closing in on those key areas, yep. um, especially food sources. If you know where they're somewhat bedding and you know where those white oaks are or the, the oak trees or field – you know that they have to go from the bedding area to the food. So if you can get it where you, you can play the wind, you can play you're not going too close to the bedding area, and that's how you're going to catch them. So that's what I do. Um, my two biggest scouting um, moments would be right after the season where uh, if there's snow on the ground, but it's like, you know, almost january um right after like december 15th you're gonna know where those deer are going because they're still in that pattern of uh, so you can say that for the following season exactly um so if it's if it's you know a couple inches of snow and you see heavy heavy game trails that's where you're going to want to be next year or at least putting cameras to know right um but yeah that's that's what i do is is i scout hard now and in that time um and then i'm sure you know i shoot my bow constantly so i don't it's not so much um do you, do you shoot right now or i would if i had my bow oh what's where's right he's still waiting on your bow still waiting on waiting it. on it oh yeah. that new one it's been 12 weeks so when if you did have your bow would you just shoot out front in your front yard mm -hmm. yeah gotcha. i like i said i shoot at least 
I try to shoot at least 50 arrows. Sometimes I don't. Um, I'll shoot, you know, on cold days, I'll go out and just shoot 10 to 15. Yep. Um, but when it's nice out, I'm constantly outside shooting my bow. Um, this year, I'm going to get into, um, like, arrow weights. Um, I want to... I want to dive deep into spines, arrow weights, um, helicals, uh, just the, the crazy setups that you can get. Um, so that's what I'm going to do this year. Okay. Is I want to do some instructional uh, videos. Am I a professional? No, but I know quite a bit, and I think that stuff that I've picked up along the way can help other people that are trying to get into it. Yeah, it could be beneficial for yeah. everyone to learn. You know, I mean, someone that's not a professional is... You know, I mean, for the most part, because you've taught me, Sid, maybe Brandon, I don't know, Brandon a little bit, probably, you probably picked up a couple yeah. of things from Brand. Yeah. Um, so, my other question is like, right now, so when you go out into the woods, is it like mostly snowshoeing or is it you just tromping through there? Yeah, I've got the snowshoes on because it's, it's some, still somewhat deep. Um, it's pretty hard right now, but you can't, like, you'll walk. 20 steps sink two feet right 20 steps and i i'm not about that i just want i just want to go what type of snowshoes are you on because <sighs> yeah rusty you like to snowshoe yeah too, i like so. snowshoe i just bought them um are they like the newer style or are they uh they're yeah they're brand new i just bought them this year um crap that's gonna bug me now that i can't remember what they're called but uh I think yeah. I know what you're talking about. They're like the aluminum. They're, yeah, they're aluminum. They're super light. Um, and these, so I had a cheap pair uh, last year. Yeah. I, I hated them. These ones have a, uh, it has a rod and then it swivels where your foot goes. I know. So it's, yep. Yep. it's literally, you're just walking through the woods it, and just like you're walking, like a swivel. Oh, wow. And, um, if you're going up a steep hill, it has a thing that flips up on the back, and it's like you're walking upstairs. Oh, yeah. I know exactly what you're talking about. It, it's freaking amazing. Um, made a huge difference in how I hike, where I go. It, huge difference. Um, but, yeah, I, I love to just go out and find different – and the dogs are a huge help, too. Um, like <laughs> – I saw wow. like a picture is that goddamn spine coming back with trigger. <laughs> oh my god, yeah. Um, like last, uh, what did I go? A few days ago, and uh, Cabela found a bed, a deer bed with a bunch of blood in it. Never would have seen it. Never even would have, you know, thought to look over there. Um, that's why, like, when I'm shed hunting and we're not finding any sheds, I'm pretty sure there's not any around. So I go to a, a whole different area because the uh, I have plot hounds, so they find pretty much everything. Right. Um, they've basically brought a whole deer out to to my front door. <laughs> um, <laughs> Cabela, I think it was a couple months ago, brought that small antler that's up there um, right to the right inside. So <laughs> I mean, Cabela's um, better than you, man. What's up? <laughs> I Great. suck. I told you. I, suck. I got um, a pretty good story for you. Um, when I was a little kid, so back, um, back across the street from my grandparents is where, um, me and Chris have done a majority of our hunting over the years yep. and, uh, way out back, um, the river pretty much, uh, it's actually, um, beach river, beach river, uh, goes in and around that part of the property and it actually makes a, a cranberry bog, like way out in it. That part of the fucking land is weird because it used to be before uh, Osby Lake had the dam put it. Well, they put the, uh, I can't even speak English. They put the uh, <laughs> dam into Osby Lake and they basically flooded all that land. But before that, it used to be all hay fields. So that's where it created the cranberry bog. I think it was how it went. Well, we went in with four wheelers many moons ago. And uh, it was a fortnight. It was <laughs> the beer's starting to kick in. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, we went. We were trudging through the freaking cranberry bog, and we came across. Um, it was a good sized fucking buck. He had actually got his antlers caught so fucking bad 
in the brush in that cranberry bog, he couldn't move. No way. Couldn't move a fucking inch. Well, the fucking koi dogs, or coyotes, they had fucking surrounded him, ate him from the fucking asshole up. Shut the fuck up. I'm fucking serious. The only thing that was fucking left at that point was fucking bones and some of the fucking flesh and skin on his fucking head. And you just found it like we that? We just fucking found him like that. Dang. That's that's sick. a good find, man. That, that was yeah, a that's great crazy. fucking find. And we were going to take it home, too, until my father decided that he was going to fucking try to scream as fucking fast as he could. Ow. I'm riding with him on the fucking four-wheeler. Uh, he's definitely fucking afraid of snakes. And he saw this big-ass fucking water snake. And uh, he's trying to get out as fast as he fucking could. Didn't see a fucking beaver hole that was right in the middle of it. And he flips the fucking four-wheeler. Jesus Christ. <laughs> I end up in the fucking beaver hole. And it's flooded. Fucking freezing cold. It was like fucking... Uh, I think it was fucking October at that, at that point. So... You'd think he'd come to help get me out. Fuck no. <laughs> nah, I left you there. He was like 200 yards out really? on the fucking shore. So what happened to the, the deer? The deer? You just left him there? We just fucking left him there. Oh, At that point, we were, was... trying to, we were trying to get me back because I was fucking... Oh, like, I'd leave you there. <laughs> I'd leave my fucking kids there. out there. I'll well, back for you, you. you were young then, <laughs> then though, right? Oh, yeah, just like, don't move. <laughs> I was like eight or nine or something like that. That so that pretty was, cool. That how was it a good buck? Oh god, yeah, it was like that one you got there on the wall. Shut. Oh yeah, I'd leave my kids right out there. Yeah. Just see ya. Make a fire. I would cut the head, <laughs> the head off. Throw them on the back. I'm just kidding, people. He's not though. He's really not. I am. <laughs> <laughs> um. So, when you go snowshoeing, Rusty, do you... I know you like doing everything the fucking old way for some reason. Um, <laughs> That's an understatement. But, yeah, I got a couple of uh, you, old pair, but anyway. Um, what do you What do you use for snowshoes? Uh, now, I use an old pair of uh, military-style magnesium trail breakers. Um, they're built just like a traditional fucking snowshoe, but they're made out of fucking magnesium. Kind of like today's snowshoes. Yeah. Um, they're actually really great. The only thing I wish they had was those uh, spikes that they would have on the yeah. uh, they'd have on the toe. Those make a huge difference too. The only and the only other thing is is that um, I've heard that um, like you ever go to walk across a road or something like that to get to, um, to keep following the trail or mm-hmm. something like that. Uh, the wooden the old wooden ones. I got a pair of them too. The old wooden ones, they tend to bend a little more, um, you know, have a little more give. Yeah. Those old magnesium ones, I heard that you can literally fucking bend them. Um, really? So I'll actually get to the fucking side, like, and uh, kind of, like, sidestep my fucking way back onto the snow trail. Huh. I know a lot of the fish and game officers use those old school wooden ones. Do they? Yeah. They're still great. Um, they're handmade. I can't remember who makes them, but they're expensive. Right. Well, and the reason I say that is because, I mean, a while ago we were talking about gear and all. Rusty hunts with, like, wool clothing, like old-style yeah. wool. Johnson. Yeah, Johnson. I, I stick by Johnson. That's what I have. Fully through. <clears throat> I mean, I used to hunt with uh, a lot of real tree shit, and then... Their old I, stuff was really good. Their their new stuff is... Yeah, no. Eh, it's all right. It's something that I've always noticed over the years... You can have a you can have a guy spend thousands of fucking dollars on fucking uh, scent blocker, fucking have the <laughs> Brandon Chris is pointing at Brandon, <laughs> and I'm flipping him. <laughs> <laughs> but you can have a guy spend thousands of dollars on his fucking equipment, and uh, I mean do all the fucking preparation in the world. No offense to anybody, but I've noticed that you get one dude that just goes out. And some old fucking flannels. Smoke cigarettes the entire fucking time. Shit in the same fucking area. Piss in the same area. Fucking dip. And he'll fucking... Shoot the biggest one out there. He'll shoot the biggest one yeah. out there. Happens all the time. Yeah, I mean, we were talking about that last... Yeah. What was the last episode we were talking about uh, that? Or the, the episode the before? The one before, yeah. It's the same with fishing. Like, you have the guy who has all the, right. the nice reels, all the, all the sponsors on the shit. And you just have some, like, 10-year-old go out there with a little, like, 
Barbie fishing pole, and she yeah. fucking nails it, dude. Right. Yep. You know? It's just the luck of the draw. Yeah. It, it really is, though. Yeah. I, I mean... I think the important thing, though, is, like, you have to be prepared, right? So, you, like... Like, right now, if I went out to the woods and a big buck came and I had my bow, I clearly am not prepared to shoot this thing <laughs> at, like, 50 yards or 30 yards, right? I would have to, like, put in the work to get to that point. I think that's the important part of all this. Yeah. It, and that with a bow, it, a gun, yeah, you got to – you obviously have to know how to shoot and all that. Yeah. But with a bow, it's literally you have to practice. The margin of error is so, so much, much higher. There's yeah. just so much that goes into it. You know what I mean? I think this week I'm dropping my bow off at Coyote Creeks. Nice. And then, like, when I drop it off, I'm also just going to get arrows done, and I'm going to get my, my my heads for my for my hunting season this upcoming year. I'm just going to get it all right then and there, yeah. so it's all it's all set up so I can just start going at it from that oh, point we're, on. Oh, we're going at it, man. You're getting one. I'm telling you right now. We're <laughs> fucking getting you one. You know, there's something I do want to do. I want to I wanna set up, like, a 3D archery course somewhere. I was going to say that. Because so tack screwed us again not, uh, not tack I'm not talking ill about that Vermont screwed Vermont us Vermont screwed us yeah God doesn't Coyote Creek have them? what doesn't Coyote Creek have they them? do but we're talking about like a um, like a walk and shoot like a yep. walk and shoot oh okay I see I was gonna contact some buddies um, that do this kind of stuff as well yeah uh, I'm not gonna say any names now but um, and hopefully we can set something up where we can just have people sign some waivers or something and you know, do it out back here with the field and the pit. Right. We can have some uphill shots, downhill shots. Tri- you know. Right. Oh, set up, set up some yeah. stands or something. It, exact something. You know, yeah. like anything. Um, and maybe La Virtue Builders will pitch in some targets. <laughs> hey, Dad. Hey, Daddy. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, that'd be fucking amazing. Yeah, I think people people would love to come do it too. I mean, and not for nothing, it's fun as hell, and it gets you out there with your bow. Yeah, that, that's a big thing in too. Real, I, real-ish situations. Yeah, like through trees and right down and up hills and different you know, scenarios. Yeah, definitely. because I mean, you anyone can come. Well, I say anyone, you can go up back of your house and shoot 20, 30, 40, 50. Yeah. and you know it's you do it every day, and then you go out in the woods, and then you're like. Oh shit! This thing's moving. This thing is, you know, behind a tree or behind a bush, and it it mentally it screws you up. Right. Um, unless you've seen it before and you know, experiences everything really. And, but, yeah, and just get, like we said earlier, it just gives you that practice. You know, yeah. like are you walking up on that? Okay, that's probably like thirty yards. Let me change my sight quickly. You know. Yeah. And right. Learn like practice yourself being quiet while you're doing it, and so yep. on and so forth. And what I do to get kind of uh, back to the preparation. Um, when I shoot my bow, I don't shoot straight on, you know, 20, 30, 40, 50. Um, I'll angle myself certain ways. I'll go to like 22 yards or, you know, 44 yards. Um, That's and, actually really smart. Yeah, it, it gets, it makes like, so I have a single pin and, it, and I'm able to, if I'm at 43, I can set my uh, slider to 43 yards yeah. and make sure that it's good every time. I also shoot out to 110, 120. So when I shoot 40, 50, 60, it's like shooting 20 yards for me. It must be nice. Um, <laughs> but like I said, I shoot every day. Like, yeah, that's true. That's this. It's what I do. That if I have one passion, other than you know family and kids, it's it's my bow. It, yeah. You know, that's my third child. I tell everyone it's. <laughs> have you ever tried uh, doing any like recurve or longbow? Um, yeah, the re- the recurve stuff I just haven't quite got into. Like I haven't I mentally haven't, gotten into. You're still into the the cross. Yeah, the, uh, I think this this year. Um, this year is more getting you guys set up to get your first years. Because you're this year, you're all about the about the recording and like the the videography you, side of this, right? That, but also like I want to see you guys get your first year. Yeah, um, and I want to see Cat get a buck so she she had that doe that she got right but i want to i she puts the time in and she puts the effort in shooting her bow and i I really think that she can she can get it done i want i would rather see that than me get anything at all to be honest yeah and you guys as well i would rather see everybody else around me get one than me than me get one i think i think depending on how this season goes 
if I get my first deer this season, the the next big jump for me is gonna be is gonna be go do a hunt somewhere else, not New Hampshire, <laughs> not New England. It's a good segue right there, Brand. Yeah, good job. I, thought I, did pretty good. I would do Texas. <laughs> so Texas would be oh, Texas. Texas would be a good pig hunt. Yeah, good pig hunt and access what deer. You, right, that's down there. Is that yeah. it? What do you think it costs to own property in Texas? A little. I don't know. I've heard a lot of people migrating to Texas. Oh, yeah. every, so everyone's leaving California much. to go to Texas. Right. Yeah, exactly. Or Idaho. So the listeners who are here who don't know what we're talking about, we're, we're looking, <laughs> we're dipping our feet into the, the, into I, the owning idea. the property somewhere else in another state to hunt. Could be right. Montana. Maybe I Montana. think Montana should be it. I love Montana. I just want to go there. Can I want, you... Pack what, up and move. That's what I want to do. What if we did Alaska? Bang. I, I, I was see. looking at Alaska. No. Montana, man. Because what? You got elk, to... caribou, grizzly, deer still, and I think mule deer too, right? Oh, they have bison, elk, they have, bison. Everything. They have everything in Montana. Right. However, pause, comma, it's Alaska. Exactly. It's, Moose. It's the last frontier. And you can get property And it's closer. Decent. Yeah, and the mosquitoes are so bad. Is it Wait, closer? You the animals well, are you woods. high? I thought we were talking about Canada. That was dumb. You did are. Did you just say man. Alaska is closer to New Hampshire that was than so Montana? Dumb. Yes, he did. Stick. I thought we were talking about Canada. That was dumb. <laughs> How's that Miller High Life? <laughs> it's fucking great. <laughs> oh, my God. I can't believe I just said that. <laughs> what an what idiot. The next week, we'll, we'll have a guest speaker. We'll have a guest speaker on, on and... Uh, yeah, we'll, they, we'll talk about doing a, a hunt somewhere else. Another, I have buddies who do hunts in Idaho, Montana, Colorado, Colorado. Yeah, that'd be awesome. You know, yeah, so let's ne- let's dive into that. Let's get some next week. The man, the myth, the legend, Storm and Norman, beyond the sponsor. You know, Daddy <laughs> <laughs> will be on Faja in law. <laughs> Um, that's gonna be a good one. I um, haven't. Se- I don't think I've seen your dad since Christmas, at least. I haven't seen your dad in a long time. You haven't. Have. Yeah. Um, that's so look, gonna be a good one because he's gonna be able to, you know, give us some outlook on what it was like, you know, twenty years right, ago. Yeah. Like when he started, um, and then tell us all the bullshit stories of him with his golden horseshoe up his ass. And <laughs> I mean, granted, but sometimes. Those are the best stories to sit around like a campfire and listen to. Oh, 100%. To. So yeah. it, should, it should be a good one. I agree. But Well, I think that's it for this one. Rusty, thanks yeah. for coming by. Yeah. The old pal thanks Rusty coming by. Me. Appreciate it. Was it was great. Thank I mean, you, LaVirtue Builders, for yes. this opportunity. Yes. LaVirtue Builders, for helping Montana. us out. And, get uh, get yeah. guests into Montana. <laughs> we'll get them to buy the property. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, get Rus- we'll get Rusty out of here. And I'll cool. God peace out, too, with the wife. Cool. So, Alrighty, y'all. Thanks, guys. Thanks for listening. This is White Oak Creek Outdoors, a podcast for everyone with a passion for the outdoors.